Well, good morning, everyone, and happy Tuesday. I hope you all are having a, a blessed day. I don't know how it is where you're at, but uh, it's still cold and snowy. Okay, today, I'm on the ball today. Today, aside from the reading, I'll be doing the most evil zodiac signs in order from nicest to most wicked. Where do you think your sign falls? Well, just hold on to after the reading and you'll find out. And also after the reading, after that, at the very end of the show, I have a special announcement coming up. So you all will probably want to stick around for that. But anyway. Oh, I need a little bit more light in here. There. Okay, anyway. Let's, uh. Get things a rolling. I want to do it this way. Oops. You know what? That card keeps on coming out. So I won't even draw one. I'll just take this one because. I have a funny feeling this one might be the card. You ready? Okay. You have the eight of blades, AKA the eight of swords. The element of this card is air. Astrological association is Jupiter and Gemini. The number is eight. And this falls under the sphere of majesty and the mind. The Eight of Blades takes the expansive Jupiter in with a sociable Gemini, a highly creative and intellectual combination. The challenge is to manage information overload as ideas can go too far, leading to potential failure due to a lack of perspective and focus. And as I said, the card's number is eight. And one of its meaning is change, renewal, and stability. And as, you know, the blades or the swords are the suit of air, which rules the mind. Its common meaning is majesty, and in this eight of blades refers to the mastery of the mind. Now this shows being trapped. This may be due to a series of bad experiences and poor luck, and you begin to wonder if things can ever improve. You may be anxious due to an unsatisfactory bond with an individual or an organization. Specifically, you may be trapped by a credit agreement that leaves you little money for yourself. This unfortunate card commonly reveals problems in careers and the intellectual or mental realm, showing frustration and at its most extreme panic. Hemmed in and unhappy, you may find it impossible to do your work to your satisfaction due to unreasonable demands or disorganized management. Also, there may be a sense of conversations going on behind closed doors that you are not party to, so you feel isolated and even vulnerable. The card commonly arises in readings to show someone who is in a role that doesn't suit them, but they are under pressure to conform such as working in the family business or taking a course because it will lead to a profession, although it isn't what they love doing at all. Many creatives and light workers go through this experience of not fitting in, but it takes time and confidence 
to find your path. You can release yourself from these bonds, but it will de take determination. And you may need to swallow your pride and ask others for support and advice. On a social level, the Eight of Blades can show you feeling humiliated or ignored, and you feel others' attitudes towards you. An additional meaning of the card is illness and incapacity. Again, this does not imply permanent disability, but a phase of physical restriction. During this time when you're feeling helpless and restricted in your thinking, these limitations come not only from yourself, but also from outside sources. It seems you will never work out which is from where. All this doubt makes you your own worst enemy because you can't trust what is real and what isn't. You may find it helpful to take a step back and write down what you perceive about your situation, then review it later when you feel more confident in your mental process. Keywords are helplessness, trapped, danger, and obstacles. Okay, so not the greatest card, but remember, like, like anything, this will pass. This is just a temporary state. All right. Now let's get to some fun. Here are the 12 zodiac signs ranked from least evil to most evil. I'm starting with the nicest first. And of course, that's me, Libra. Yay! Libra is the nicest zodiac sign. It's one of the three zodiac signs that are too nice for their own good, meaning that they are hopeless when it comes to being evil. Plotting against other people is totally against the loving and caring Libra's mantra. So, now that we know I'm an angel, <laughs> no snickering back there. Next nicest zodiac sign is Pisces, because Pisces hates bad vibes. Pisces' personality doesn't have a mean bone in their body and attempts to avoid negativity whenever possible. Pisces is one of the nicest zodiac signs, and no matter how many times they get their feelings hurt, they never react negatively. All right. Next is Sagittarius. And Sagittarius is anti-evil. If we had to name a carefree and happy-go-lucky zodiac sign, we'd immediately be drawn to Sagittarius. As the funniest zodiac sign, Sagittarius is too busy cracking jokes to concentrate on world domination and other evil matters. Okay, now we're getting a little bit deeper in. Not much, not much. Because cancer is next and cancer is way too nice cancer is one of the most sensitive zodiac signs it should come as no surprise that cancer isn't higher up on the list cancer is a lover not a fighter and turns away from conflict and drama at the first opportunity next gemini and gemini doesn't have what it takes to be evil as one of the most talkative zodiac signs, Gemini generally loves being surrounded by other people and wouldn't even dream of plotting evil plans and attacks. Gemini people are way more peace and love than anything else. Now we're down to number seven. And it's taking a bit of a turn here with Aquarius. And Aquarius can have some evil moments. The Aquarius personality is fairly relaxed and free-spirited until they feel trapped in an awkward situation. 
Whenever an Aquarius feels attacked or anxious, their evil side tends to come out, and all hell breaks loose, despite them being a fairly positive zodiac sign. Now we're down to the top six with Capricorn. Capricorn isn't opposed to plotting. It's known for the cold and calculating character, which makes them a real force to be reckoned with. Capricorn is a smart sign and always chooses their battles wisely. Their intellect means they can outsmart absolutely anyone. Five is Taurus. Taurus is unstoppable in matters of evil. Everyone knows that Taurus is one of the most stubborn zodiac signs, but did you also know how evil they are? Taurus isn't a horoscope sign that takes being crossed easily and really does have trouble forgiving and moving on. Number four, Aries. Beware of the evil mastermind. As one of the three fire signs, the Aries personality is naturally spiky and will never let themselves be walked over. Aries is definitely explosive, but this zodiac sign also revels in planning the demise of their enemies. <laughs> Top three. Virgo is the evil genius. Virgo is one of the most intelligent zodiac signs, although they often use their brain power to concoct evil plans. Virgo may act sweet and innocent on the surface, but beneath it all, they are probably plotting plenty of crafty plans. Top two. Who do you think is going to be number one? Number two is Leo. Leo is a master plotter. It's only natural that the attention-loving sign has a malefic mind. Leo loves being the star of the show and will do anything to stay in the spotlight. Leo is the most likely zodiac sign to become famous and isn't ready to let their chance slip through their fingers. And the top one. Have you all figured it out yet? It's Scorpio. Scorpio is the evilest zodiac sign. Without too much suspense, the trophy for the evil zodiac sign goes to Scorpio. The Scorpio personality is full of so many intricate layers, yet the characteristics that shine through brightest are their cunningness and slyness. Take our advice and don't get on these guys' bad side. And Albert's a Scorpio, so yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't get on his bad side. I agree with that 100%. So what do you all think? Were you surprised? Okay, now on with that announcement. It's that time of month again. I will be doing the readings. So, if you would like a reading, here's what you have to choose from. I'm offering up four different types of tarot card readings. Number one, the Thoth. Number two, the Tarot of Wonderland. Number three, the Tarot 13. Go figure. And number four is the ones like I, I read today, the Antique Anatomy Tarot. Okay, now for Oracle cards, I'm offering Past Life Oracle cards, Whispers of Love, 
Archangel Oracle Cards, Madame and Dora's Fortune Cards, and Moonology Oracle Cards. And lastly, I'm offering uh, a rune reading. And I have the Witch's Runes and my regular Elder Futhark Runes. And that's, that's the runes I read most often. But, uh, yeah, just write down the number of the card you want. Or rune. One reading per person, please. And uh, the... Shut off time for, for this will be tomorrow night at midnight Eastern time. So please have your requests in by then. If you want a reading, just put your name down in the comment section below on this page. It's got to be on the YouTube page. So under your name, just write uh, the name of the card you want or rune or... The number, the number is fine. It's easiest. And then I will try to get that video out to you in the following day or so after, after that. So let me see. That'd be Wednesday night. Uh, Thursday or Friday, I'll try to have those out to you. Yes, just those are your choices this time. I do so many others, but it's hard to list them all. And some just get never requested at all, like the dice or the the I Ching. So I, I'm I just put down the ones the Oracle cards at least, the ones that get requested the most, I think. So take your pick, get your requests in, in the comments down below, or maybe they're off to the, the side. I'm not sure where your comments are, but yeah, they're, they're somewhere there. Yeah. Yeah, you get the ticket. So anyway... Let's see. That's all I have for today. Hope you have a blessed Tuesday. Peace. Believe. And until tomorrow. Bye-bye. Uh,